This video is about fit and misfit and specifically table 3.1 in WinStep software. We are also going to talk some vocabulary. So first a quick note on sample size. The absolute 100% minimum sample size is six per item. Uh, but generally we default to at least 10 per item. So if you have 10 items, then you would need 100 people. If you had 10 items, you need at least 60 people. And of course, more is always better. But this is a huge benefit to Roche analysis specifically because we can do really cool analyses with smaller sample sizes, um, especially compared with the other IRT models. Once you get into two parameter and three parameter, you need thousands of data set, thousands of people. So fit, we gotta have fit. If your data doesn't fit the model, then it doesn't work. The benefits of what we get to do with Roche don't matter if the data doesn't fit. And remember, the, th the model trumps the data. So we believe in the Roche model. We believe that this is what a good measure should be. And if it doesn't fit that, then your data aren't good or the measure isn't good. It's not that we are going to throw out and modify the actual measurement model. That is very different than classical test theory with EFA, CFA, and SEM models that we are actually going to modify them because the model and our theory with the model can vary based on what the data is saying. Not true with Roche. So with fit statistics, we have a lot of different things. This video is going to be about global fit. We also are going to have person fit, item fit, and scale or step fit, those categories. Let's first review kind of what we think this model is and how it should be working to understand if it's going to fit or not fit and where it's not going to fit. So we have three items. One is easy. The other, you know, the third one is hard. Item two is in the middle. And then we have people with varying abilities. So we have the least able to the most able. So the most able gets all three correct. The least able gets the easy item correct and misses these two hard items. This person has more ability because they get these two items correct and then this one. So these three fit our pattern perfectly. But then we have these middle groups. So here item, I'm sorry, both person three and four got item three correct, but person four got item two correct, which is harder. Person three got item one correct, which is easier. And then they missed these two. So since this one is harder to get correct and they got it correct, they have more ability going through. And remember, we're talking about correct and incorrect. Most of what we do in social sciences are rating scales, so we can talk about endorsements. Endorsement could be more positive and more negative um, feelings like attitude scales. It could be more frequent, less frequent, and whatever kind of you're determining it should be. It should be more frequent, it should be less frequent. That would be your correct answer. So these patterns are where things get more fun and help us kind of tease out different abilities and help us understand items that are hard and not harder and easier. All of this is based on the Gutman pattern, which you are welcome to read a lot more about. The research questions being addressed by Rash analysis are, does the data fit the model? What is the measured construct? And then kind of, we think about a person's, when a person's responses fit the model, then we can accurately measure their ability. And the sim it's the same with items and scale. So when the items fit the model, then we can accurately trust all of our parameters that we're making with those items. When we have a scale that fits the model, then we can trust all of the estimated theta parameters that are, we're gonna see in this model. We have a lot of other research question opportunities as well within Rosh. We can look at you know different factors. If we, ha we know that there's multiple factors, we can confirm that. Um, we can confirm factor structure with an independent sample. So you could, like my, my dissertation had a calibration sample and a validation sample to you know examine sample free concepts. We also want to look for reliability and validity for each of the factors. We want to look at the scales and if they're being used appropriately and how things are working there. We can talk about is the item well targeted 
for this group of people that have answered these items. And we can also, of course, look at our ruler and see what are the hardest and what are the easiest items. Okay, some quick vocab. Outfit is an unweighted fit statistic. Infit is a weighted fit statistic. And this came about because people who are kind of around the extremes can have severe effects on the unweighted statistic. It tends to be more with people who have low ability that get a difficult item right, um, and we see weirdness in patterns when we have people who have more ability that are getting easy items right, or sorry, wrong. So you have more ability, but you're getting easy items wrong. So kind of those extreme cases. Um, so the infit kind of looks at the middle, the outfit looks at the whole and can be affected by outliers. Pause and you can read through this. So generally we want our mean square values to be about one and less than one indicates that the variable, I'm sorry, the variance in the data is muted. We're kind of overfitting. If it is greater than one, then we have excess noise and we underfit. I am more concerned with excess noise than I am with overfit. Here's a little bit on outfit that you can pause and read. An outfit, um, our goal here is also near one with kind of our same rationale. But then we have to talk about mean square versus standardized. So mean square is reported with both infit and outfit. And this is a chi-square statistic that's divided by its degrees freedom. So that's where this comes through. The Z standardized is the standardized mean square. So we are actually creating that mean square and changing it to a Z score. And we remember, hopefully, with Z scores at 95% confidence, basically everything outside of that is plus or minus two. But we're gonna come back to that when we talk specifically about item fit. Ideally, our expected standardized scores is zero. And here's your reminder. So zero would be right in the middle, which is where we'd want kind of everything to be falling. At least at 95% confidence, we wanna be about within two standard deviations. If we want to be really picky exactly at 95% confidence and not 95%, 95.44%, we would be at 1.96, between plus and minus 1.96. So again, if you haven't seen 3.1 table, it is right here. We are looking at these values going across. There's lots of other information. We're going to come back to this table several times throughout the course. The total fit statistic is sensitive to kind of the extreme patterns. So guessing would be when low ability people get high, hard items correct. And startup would be when people with high abilities get the easy items incorrect. Those are the patterns where it can get really sensitive and can be extremely hard to determine and pick those out. Um, this is also sensitive when item characteristic curves discriminate differently. Rush models hold these consistent, so that's not usually an issue for us. So the work on Misfit is still huh, ongoing. There's no hard and fast rules, but generally speaking, mean square is close to one, standardized square is close to zero. So outfit, when outfit scores are very different than infit scores, that is giving you evidence that there are outlier issues. When the problem seems to be on the infit, those are influenced by the response patterns, like we just talked about with the guessing. Those are extremely hard to diagnose and a much greater threat to measurement. So we always want to address fit first and try to kind of work through concerns that we see. And of course, dimensionality and fit go hand in hand because the assumption of local independence and unidimensionality that's what the whole model is based on. So if your model is not unidimensional, it is going to mess with all of your fit. So we look at table 23 first. I tend to look at table 23 first. And then look at 3.1 just to confirm response patterns um, and outlier influence. So you're now going to, if you're one of my students, 
Go back to the syntax examples, and I want you to look through table 3.1. And I'll give you a hint. We really don't see any weirdness. So even though all of most of these had dimensionality problems, the overall fit is actually pretty good. And this is typical. It's not, I have not seen a lot of times where table 3.1 is showing me major concerns, even with dimensionality. So usually there is a lot of really awful things happening to get to the point where you see these patterns popping up in 3.1, but we still check them and we definitely report them.